Okay, and here is your question. Right, so if you have read and understood, considering this surgical pathology station, kindly tell me uh, what are you looking at exactly right now? Uh, this is uh, diamond shape and fabrical fossa. Yes. Yes, can you tell me the boundaries of the fabrical fossa? Okay, so supralaterally would be a bicep femoris and uh, infralaterally would be lateral head of gastrocnemius and popliteus uh, and uh, supramedially would be semi membranous, semi tendinous, and inframedially would be medial head of gastrocnemius. Can you tell me the contents of the popliteal fossa from superficial to deep, please? So, a more superficial would be tibial nerve, uh, common peroneal nerve, popliteal vein, uh, small septus vein, posterior cutaneous nerve of high lymph node, uh, genuinal branch of uh, obturator nerve, and popliteal artery would be deepest. Okay. Right. Can you please identify number 15 over here? In picture A, number please. Okay. Uh, this looks like Tibian. Tibian nerve. Okay. Can you please identify number two over here in picture um, A, please? Um, yes. Okay. 11, please. Uh, this would be semi membranous. Yes. Yes. Right. If you can uh, identify number six over here, please. Number six. This looks like uh, some muscular branch. Okay. If we can move on to picture B. Can you see eight, number eight over here, please? Popliteal artery. Very good. 10. Popliteal vein. Right. Okay. If you can tell me, how would you, if you can tell me, how would you take the pulsation of popliteal artery? Uh, so for that, I will put my uh, thumbs as the uh, front of the knee and my fingers would be in the popliteal fossa. Yes. My index finger of both hands and my thumbs of both hands will be anterior to the knee. Uh, at the joint line. And then I will feel the pulsation. Okay. If you have to tell the diagnosis of a mass on the posterior of a posterior popliteal fossa, then what are the differential diagnoses that you would consider? To rule out the mass. Okay, so it could be popliteal artery aneurysm, it could be uh, Baker cyst, it could be popliteal vein varicosity, it could be lipoma, seroma, uh, cyanoma. Yes. Okay, 
What is bursitis? Bursitis is inflammation of the bursa. How many bursis are present around the knee joint? Pass. Okay. Can you tell me uh, how many compartments there are in the leg? Uh, there is uh, two posterior compartments, one lateral and one anterior. Four compartments are there. Okay. Can you please tell me the contents of these compartments? How these compartments are divided, and what are their contents? Uh -huh. Interosseous membrane divides the uh, anterior and posterior compartment. Anterior facial septum separates the anterior and lateral compartment. Lateral and posterior compartment are separated by the posterior facial septum. And anteriorly, there would be uh, muscles such as external. Uh, uh, yes. External hallucis longus, extensor digitorum longus, tibialis anterior, peronis tertius, and lateral would be peronis brevis, peronis longus, posteriorly, uh, there would be superficial and deep compartment. And yes. in the superficial super, super, super would be gastrocnemius, plantaris soleus, and in the deep would be flexor hallucis longus, flexor digitorum longus, uh, popliteus, and uh, tibialis posterior. And okay. the interior to command would be inspired by the deep peronial nerve, lateral would be superficial. Posterior coronal nerve and posterior would be tibial nerve supplying the both posterior compartment and tibial by the tibialis anterior artery <clears throat> and posterior by the tibialis posterior artery and superficial coronal artery supplying the lateral compartment. All right, can you please tell me on the, the surface marking of extensor hallucis longus muscle? Uh, extensor hallucis longus muscle, uh, it, it originates from the mid fibula and uh, then it uh, extends downward uh, between the BLS interior and extensor uh, hallucis brevis downward, and uh, uh, then uh, uh, it passes on the dorsum of the foot and it, it is inserted into the uh, distal phalanx of the great toe. What are the vessels and nerves found deep to extensor hallucis longus? Uh, Tibialis interior artery and tibialis interior vein. Uh, right, artery and vein and the nerve, the peroneal nerve. Deep because nerve. nerve I also asked. Okay, uh, if a patient has a pain on uh, dorsiflexion, then you, what would you suspect? Which compartment uh, is responsible? Is for dust reflection, then it would be anterior compartment. Okay. Why does a patient feel uh, pain? If a patient has a nerve, uh, if a patient has a trauma or come across a trauma or something and then complains of a pain, cruciating pain or pain without any provocation in the leg, especially on dust reflection, what might be the reason? Yeah, it could be compartment syndrome. Okay, good. How would you confirm the, your diagnosis? Uh, for confirmation, I will first of all look clinical signs. Uh, what are the five P that you look for? Uh, yeah, it could be pain out of proportion. It yes. Could be, uh, uh, it could be uh, pallet. It could be uh, a poikilothermia. It could be uh, paralysis. There will be paralysis and pulse lessness. Later, yes. Later, yes. What should be the management that you can offer to the patient? And uh, sorry, I forget. I will also check the compartmental pressure. I will yes. that. Uh, How much should be the compartment the, pressure? Uh, it should be normally, I think, less than. Uh, 30, and if it would be more than 30, then it would be compartment syndrome confirmed diagnosis. Good. Thank you. You started your timer, and here is your question.
So if you have read and understood considering this surgical pathology session, kindly tell me what are the differential diagnoses that you will consider for this patient? Uh, according to the scenario, it may be uh, carcinoma esophagus, esophageal yes. stricture, achalasia cardia, uh, Barrett's esophagus, uh, esophagitis, gastroesophageal refract disease. Good. How would you confirm your diagnosis? Uh, first of all, I will do uh, esophageal gastroenterology yes. and, and biopsy uh, and histopathology if there is uh, any suspicious lesson. Yes. Any blood? And um, I, I want to do a barium swallow. Yes. And uh, to rule out achalasia cardia, I want to do esophageal uh, manometry. Yes. And, uh, and to diagnose a jot, I want to do 24 hours pH monitoring. Yes. And uh, yes, there are more, but okay. You tell me more as well. Okay, can you please tell me what are the risk factors behind this condition or which can be considered? Uh, there is some risk factor uh, such as uh, if patient is uh, taking alcohol or smoking and, yes. and uh, taking uh, regular hot uh, liquid, liquid uh, diet or some infection such as Tipanosoma uh, uh, infection and uh, chronic peptic ulcer disease. Yes. And a gastrofacial reflux disease, which, which eventually yes. causes bad esophagus and yes. leads to esophageal carcinoma. Can you please tell me or can you name the genes which are involved in this uh, condition or which lead to this condition? Can I come back to the question? Yes, sure. Can you tell me the pathogenesis which leads to progressive dysphagia? Um, uh, in to this condition, uh, liquid, yes, please. Um, uh, there is uh, uh, esophagitis due to chronic gastroesophageal reflux disease, and there is a uh, uh, formation of Barrett's esophagus, which is progressive migration of uh, proximal migration of uh, columnar epithelium. and and there is uh, uh, dyspasia, severe dyspasia, and there is narrowing of the food pipe. But initially, okay. there is a patient case can swallow the liquid food, but uh, uh, by, there is dysphagia to solid, but eventually, solid and liquid both, uh, both. got stuck in you the. You have mentioned a term called Barrett's esophagus. What is Barrett's esophagus? Can you define? Barrett's esophagus is a condition, is a uh, consequence of chronic gastroesophageal reflux disease. Uh, in, in this condition, there is proximal migration of uh, columnar epithelium uh, above gastroesophageal uh, junction. Yes. And it is a columnar metaplasia. Columnar metaplasia. Okay. What is the type of lining uh, of esophagus if a patient presents with Barrett's esophagus? Then what would be the lining of esophagus that okay. you expect to see? The lining of uh, esophagus is uh, non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. But yes. Normally, but in case of bad sewers, it becomes a columnar epithelium. Right. What if it uh, this condition gets worse? What type of uh, carcinoma it leads to? Um, uh, it is uh, adenocarcinoma. adenocarcinoma. Okay. Can you please tell me? Uh, right. If you can tell me, how would you classify the carcinoma of esophagus? In, uh, in esophagus, there is two types of carcinoma, uh, adenocarcinoma in the lower third, yes. and squamous cell carcinoma in the upper two thirds. Upper, okay, yes. Right. What else I wanted to know? Uh, right. If you can. You told me the ecological factors. You Okay. Can you tell me uh, what might be the effect of uh, prolonged GERD? Like symptoms uh, of on the patient, how it presents. If uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease is, uh, is there is prolonged uh, jart can uh, can cause uh, uh, esophagitis and uh, can can cause esophageal stricture and may progress into uh, Barrett's esophagus, which may progress progress to uh, severe dyspasia, which may progress to carcinoma of esophagus. 
Yes. So basically, this is what this prolonged exposure to acid back reflex causes. Okay, can you please tell me if it is uh, ossifigial carcinoma, then how would you classify ossifigial carcinoma? Is there any uh, staging or uh, mechanism for knowing the okay. status of the carcinoma? The investigation. Sorry, yes, uh, TNM staging or any yeah, way yes, of... Yes, there is TNM staging. Uh, in TIS, this is carcinoma in C2 and T1 uh, confined to mucosa and submucosa. mucosa uh, T2 in muscular scopia and T3 uh, uh, up to T unica, uh, sorry, uh, there is um, uh, which is beyond muscular scopia in T4 inversion to the surrounding structure and in in nodal status and not there is no node involved and was one to three and uh, and one one to three and two three to uh, four to seven and more than seven is m3 and m not is no metastasis and m1 is uh, distant metastasis okay now you have told me about the staging and grading how this immunohistochem chemistry helps in diagnosing the cancer patient or how it helps a patient with ossipical carcinoma? Uh, immunohistochemistry uh, diagnosed uh, uh, any malignancy yes. by there is, a, there is a, a, yes. anti, a stain with the antibody when antibody uh, joined to the particular antigen which is responsible for the malignancy then there is antigen antibody reaction and uh, color of uh, dye dye is changed and a specific color is present then we will ensure that this antigen or this uh, type of malignancy can you is present. mention the dye cytokeratin oh, i think you did okay can you please tell me considering this patient what is the management that can be offered to him um, uh, first of all uh, we have to uh, confirm the diagnosis and then we have to yes. uh, do a staging if the yes. patient is uh, fit and if the patient, if the, if the stage is uh, TIS and T1A, which is uh, up to mucosa, we can do endoscopic mucosal resection followed by chemotherapy. And if the patient is uh, T1, T1B, and T2, and, and not, we can do uh, keratin resection, which is in the lower part, which is uh, esophageal gastrectomy with ONY uh, esophageal gastrectomy. Uh, by thoracoabdominal abdominal uh, incision. In the middle part, we can do two stage iron loose uh, insection. In the upper part, we can do three stage, which is uh, macron uh, insection. And above T3 and N2, nodal status, we have to consider chemo radiotherapy first. And then we will assess the condition after chemo radiotherapy, then we will decide. Right. If you are asked uh, to explain the management again, how would you? Again, a second time, how would you attempt your question? Because this is a male and some of the risk factors that I asked you, patient is smoker and yes, yes patient had this girl yeah. disease as well. So maybe first you'll start with uh, life modification. Life modification. Yes. Well, so stopping of uh, smoking, so of smoking, smoking, yes. smoking and protein uh, farm inhibitor. Yeah, and, and, and then you'll dimension. discuss the case in MDT, and then mm -hmm. according to MTT's decision, you'll do the ma management accordingly. Good. Okay. Yes. Just rephrasing of the answer. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Started and here is the question. I will enter the room. Yes. Uh, 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 first uh, timer, uh, you have to read the question. Okay. 
Right. So if you have read and understood, considering the three middle examinations taken, can you begin? I will enter the room, wash my hands, greet the patient. Yes. Hello, how are you today? I'm fine. I'm Dr. Muhammad, one of the surgical doctors. Do I have been asked to examine your back? This yes. will include looking and feeling and also watching you walk and do some movement. Are you okay with that? Yes. Okay, thank you. May I confirm your name and age, please? I'm Lisa, I'm 40 years old. Very okay, nice to meet you. Do you have any pain before we start? Yes, little back pain. Okay, I will try to be gentle with that. Okay, if you felt any at any moment you feel pain, please let me know. Okay. Okay. Do you need any chevron with you? Please? No. Okay. Can you take a few gown for me, please, and stand up? But there will be chevron because uh, you, here you don't have to ask the patient. You have to arrange the chevron. Okay. Yes, chevron okay. is here. Yes, go ahead, please. Good. Then take off your gown, please, for yes, me, stand yes. up. Okay, I'll start by general inspection, looking for any walking aid besides the patient. And also, I would like to uh, inspection of the patient, the head and neck position. Uh, then can you just turn to your right, please? Yes. Looking for uh, inspect for lumbar lordosis and kyphosis, thoracic, and also cervical lordosis. Can you just again turn to your right? Yes. Now we are expecting the back, looking for any abnormal hair growth and also any muscle wasting or any scoliosis or any uh, any deformity. Now can yes. you just take a few steps for me, please? Okay. Yes. Now can you just uh, walk on your heel? Okay. Uh, when you said take two steps, then you have to explain how, which way, towards you or towards the wall? Towards the wall, yeah. 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 So you have to give the direction, please. Okay. Yes. Can I just take a few steps towards the wall? Yes. Try to support you while. Yes. Okay. Now, can you walk on your heel and come here? Okay. Try and say, you. I'll be I'll be supporting you and I would not let you fall. Okay. okay. Yes. Yes. Now, can you walk on your toe? Yes. Okay, now you, can you just please put one hand in front of the one foot in front of the other? Yes. And just take a few steps. Okay. 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 Now can you just uh, lay down on this? Uh, sorry. Can you just uh, look upward to the seal? Okay. Like I will just try to do some movement. Just uh, do it as I do. Okay. 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 Now you just uh, bend your head down to your toe. Okay. Okay, now you can you turn your head to the right and to the left. Yes. Now can you just bring your ear to your right shoulder? Okay. And bring your left to your left shoulder. Okay. Now you can bend your uh, trunk to your right to catch reflection and the left lateral reflection as well. Now you can bend your back toward uh, backward like this. Okay. Now just bring your trunk to, toward the, your toe and try to touch with your hands. Not trunk, your upper part of the body or so, use lemon. Okay. Yes, okay. Yes, yes. Yes, like this. Now uh, I'm going to do some marks on your back if you are okay with that. Okay. I will I will try to palpate the posterior superior iliac spine, and then put a mark, and then ten centimeter above it, and five centimeter below it. I will do the shoulder test. Yes. Now can you bend again and try to touch your toe? Yes. Okay, it will be increased. Big this toe. is normal. Yes, toe. Yeah. Big okay. Toe. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, can you please lie down on this couch for me, please? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, before that, I would like to do the temperature and the tenderness of the back. Yeah. And also palpate the spine from the cervical and down to the sacrum and then palpate the sacroiliac joint. Yes. And also do the paraspinal, uh, for looking for any question of the muscle. Yes. For, okay. Uh, I'll try to be gentle as the lumbar aspiration has uh, 
tenderness. Now, can you please lie down and discuss for me, please? Yes. Okay. Uh, I will start by examining the tone. I will do the left <laughs> skin of the limb. And yes. then do the log roll. Yes. yes. How would you do that? Log roll, this is just uh, put yes. my hand yes. at the knee. Yes. And then just roll it. Yes. Uh, now I will do the clonus. Yes. At, uh, with, uh, and uh, rapidly dorsiflex the foot with partial eversion of the foot. Now I will test the power. Can you just pink your knee or your chest? Okay. Now try to resist me and do so the other limb. And now can you just uh, try to push my hand for the knee extension and also hip extension. I'll put my hand just below the left knee. Yes. Yeah. Can you and present your examination now, please? Now I have examined this gentleman, 40 years old, who presents his back at the lower end of his yes. lumbar. Yes. And on inspection, there is no deformity, no wasting, no scoliosis, no abnormal hair growth. There is a normal lumbar lordosis, orthic kyphosis, and normal cervical lordosis. Yes. Uh, on palpation, temperature is normal, compression to the body, and there is a tenderness at the lumbar region. Uh, there is a decrease in the movement, especially at uh, backward leaning. Yes. Uh, there's limitation of movement. And so what are your differential diagnosis? The Schubert test is yes. uh, negative. Okay, good. My differential diagnosis could be due to test prolapse. Okay. And also it could be due to neuropathy because yes. of diabetes. And also it could be due to vitamin B12 deficiency. Yes. And also it could be due to spinal canal stenosis. Okay. How would you confirm your diagnosis? After taking the history and examination, I will do some investigations and inform my consultant. I will do routine investigations, CBC and inflammatory marker. And then I will do the lumbar x-ray, yes. posterior lateral, and do the MRI. Yes. What are the treatment options that you can offer this patient? Either conservative, yes. encourage exercise, and yes. uh, avoid prolonged bed rest. The okay. patient should stay active and do some exercise and lose weight. And uh, then I will go fairly off. Uh, I will also give him an analgesic according to the WH operator. Uh, then I will go for surgical cell of treatment or just prolapse, either dissectomy okay. or laminectomy. And maybe, yes, patient is waitress, so maybe you can ask her to change the type of work that she's working right now. Maybe yeah. instead of uh, standing and serving, she can sit and she can uh, do the dishes or something else. So maybe yeah. you can ask her to uh, change the Avoid type of work. Avoid lifting heavy up. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one thing that you have missed, mm -hmm. if you can yeah. tell me yourself. The femoral nerve stretch. Reflex yes. And, and uh, sciatic nerve. And you forgot to tell Legs. me that if time would have allowed me, you would have completed your examination. How? Because in yeah. this one, you have to do the cervical spine and both hip joints. Because whenever you're examining a joint, joint, joint above and joint below, yeah, you have yeah. to examine as well. So this you forgot to tell me. And yes, female stretch. Uh, Mom, in this this is, uh, session is too long. Too Be long. I able to do yes. the lower limb examination? You won't be. But then reflexes you couldn't do as well. Knee and ankle reflexes you had to mention as well. But this but test the, is the time will not allow. Will not be enough. That's why you have yeah. to focus more on the things that you have to tell me at the end or tell examiner at the end that if time uh -huh. would have allowed me. I would have completed my examination with this, 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 right? So here you yeah. have to focus, perform as much as you can. And once bell goes and you can't, then you have to mention those things at the end for, in order yeah. to score the full marks. Because okay. mentioning is as good as doing, right? 
Yeah, like the history station. Exactly. Good. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Dr. Didi. And here is your question. Right, so if you are great and understood, considering that you see taking the patient, can you begin? Good evening, my name is Dr. Hassan. I'm a May I confirm your name and age, please? I'm Smith, I'm 16 years old. Nice to meet you, Smith. May I know why you came to the hospital? Yeah, doctor, I just, I have uh, passing blood through my back it's, it's really troubling me sorry to hear you since how long you're passing this blood uh, it's been started like six months ago six months yeah so uh, you're passing daily or the time gap it does go and come how it's coming and going so what, what's the uh, time difference between two and two it's like only one to two per day. But you are, you are passing daily for the last six months. You are passing daily to uh, this blood with two. Yeah, it's mixed. Is it? Okay. How much? Uh, can you tell me how much? Is it uh, just attached with the blood or mixed with the blood or just the blood? How much? Can you? Uh, it's like a teaspoon in amount and yeah, it's okay. mixed. It. It's just two. Sorry to hear you, sir. Uh, can you tell me any other thing you are experienced while passing uh, blood history? Mm, mm, no, no. No thing. Okay. Mm. Can, yeah, can you tell me is anything else you are experienced since the uh, last six months? Yeah, I can barely hear you, doctor. Okay, uh, uh, can you tell me please, uh, do you have any constipation, uh, any yeah. change in your bowel habits? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I feel like I have constipation and this uh, suddenly change to like having diarrhea, you know? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so since how long do you have this constipation? For the last three months. Yeah. Does it go uh, on? Do, uh, uh, do you have anything else? Do you have any abdominal pain? Uh, no, not now. No. Uh, okay. Uh, do you experience any weight loss during this period? Yeah, look, I know that I have lost uh, too much weight. Uh, do you, uh, are you uh, are your eating habits the same? Are you have lost your appetite? Yeah, these days I don't eat like I used to. I've lost my appetite. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other things, any other illness in the past? Or the same? Yeah. I'm a hypertensive. Okay, since how long? For the last ten years. So you you are on the regular medication for hypertension. Yes, I take uh, amnidamine five milligram. Any other uh, any other any other uh, medication you are taking for hypertension? No, 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 no
you are are you smoker yeah okay. how long you are been smoking for the last 20 years I just take only two to three packs um, per day two to three packs per day uh, do you have ever taken alcohol uh just at the end of the week so uh okay so any uh past uh, in the past any uh in the past any surgery has been done okay. no doctor never no sir. uh can, can you please tell me who is living with you um, sorry who is living with you uh, in the family who, i live with my family living? Your, no, who is uh, who is taking care of my family, wife, children? So, <clears throat> okay. Uh, can I uh, ask you about about uh, what do you think uh, you might uh, you are talking about? What do you think of your side? What do you think? I don't know. Just. So I'm afraid that's something not good, like maybe a cancer, is it? Mm -hmm. You are telling since uh, six months your experience. Have you ever taken any medication past six months? Have you ever met any physician in GP and doctor for this thing? No. No. So Okay, ma'am. Hello. Are you done? Yes. We've had two, six seconds, five seconds. Okay. Right. Can you summarize your history now, please? Yeah, ma'am. I am presenting a 64 year old man who came with a history of bleeding for resting for the last six months, which was associated with strong suspicion for the pain. Three months with uh, with the history of loss of weight, with significant weight about ten pounds, uh, yes. with loss of appetite, with loss of appetite, and uh, but there is no history of uh, abdominal pain, and he is also a known case of hypertension for the last uh, ten uh, years on medical medication. Uh, he is also known as uh, a uh, smoker. He is a heavy smoker, taking two packs per day. So what is your differential diagnosis for this patient? My uh, differential diagnosis for this patient can be, can be uh, hemorrhoids, can be uh, di uh, diverticulosis, it can be serious bone, it can be any uh, injured disease, it can be an official. Okay, what are the important investigations that you'll carry out? I will, I will first start from the baseline, base I will do CBC, baseline. Uh, then after that, I will do uh, ARE, I will do proper ER proctoscopy, I will do sigmoidoscopy, I will go for a colonoscopy uh, to look for any mass. Any mass. Uh, first on PR, if I see anything, uh, first uh, I will do the local examination. Here is anesthesia to cause everything. So I'm proceed for DR, which is the anesthesia is painful. And Contraindicated, then uh, if there is nothing, then I will go for a PR proctoscopy and I will look for any hemorrhoids. If there is a hemorrhoid, then I have to see whether it's grade one, two, or three. Depending on the grade, uh, uh, accordingly, when for grade one, it's something okay for grade two, I will for a okay. and grade three is for an grade three, grade, grade four is uh, for a hemorrhoid. Since your first uh, prim first differential diagnosis was hemorrhoid, do you think a patient suffering from hemorrhoid can lose 10 pounds of weight and can have uh, affected appetite as well? No, ma'am, ma'am, uh, because it's, it's, it's old age. It's, it's old, and then patient gave you history of change in uh, bowel habits? Change in bowel habits, yeah. My first family diagnosis, it can be a, say, it, can, it is colon. a colon. Yes, but sir. but common is hemorrhoids. This common is hemorrhoids. So we have to look for no. Sea colon is a lot more common in UK. Yes. 
as compared to hemorrhoids, runs in genes. Of course. Mm -hmm. um, I will present my provision that as a, on the basis of a frequency or on the basis of my. No, not according to your thinking or your observation in, in your country, okay. according to UK and according to the criteria which have been presented in front of you. And then in bleeding PR that they give in MRCS exam, it's always uh, first primary differential diagnosis is CA colon. Yes. So okay. then uh, in other differential diagnosis, you can say, okay, I'll consider hemorrhoids. Even NL Fisher uh, is really low in the list. In so, the, in the, yeah. Yeah. For the bleed, bleeding for rectum, differential from these are the differential. So because in the frequency type, it will be the frequency more common is the hemorrhoid, then uh, diverticulosis, then uh, other things. And uh, this common is the CA colon, and that's why I presented first uh, hemorrhoid. Yes. Yeah. Right. And here is your question. Right, so if you have read and understood, consider it communication skills station. Can we begin? Hello, good evening. Uh, I am Dr. Rishad, one of the scientists at SHO. May I confirm your name and relationship with that uh, patient? Patient X, or you have to mention the name. Yes? Yes. A mother? May I confirm your name? Uh, Mrs. Yes, uh, uh, Miss Elizabeth, mother of the ex girl. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Elizabeth. Uh, may I offer you a glass of water? Could you please sit down for me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I was told to speak uh, with you about your child's condition. Before going further, uh, could you tell me uh, how far do you know about your child? Dr. H, are you helping? Yes, ma'am. I'm here. Yes. Hello. Could you tell me? Uh, yeah. Hello? Yeah, I just got a call at my work that my girl is okay, in the hospital. No problem. I'm so okay. worried. Okay, no problem. Can you first tell me uh, what, what you know so far about your child? Yeah, doctor, I just got a call in my, in my work that my the daughter is in the hospital. I don't know what exactly happened to her. Can you please tell me what happened to her? Okay, uh, I'm uh, telling everything about uh, about the patient, uh, so I don't have to uh, feel guilty because that that would happen uh, anyway. Uh, your uh, daughter uh, brought to the hospital. Uh, uh, hello, hello. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. yeah. Please, I'm yes. Yeah. Your daughter brought to the hospital uh, by the school teacher, and uh, after coming to the hospital, we uh, just examined her. And did some uh, investigation and we revealed that uh, she might be a suspected case of appendicitis. That's okay. why we just immediately Probably. started her treatment. Uh, like uh, we started IV fluid and some antibiotics, and we are uh, waiting for the consultant who will offer it upon her. Oh, really? Are you sure it's an appendicitis? Uh, okay, uh, okay, this. Uh, so uh, we can't uh, surely say it is appendicitis because uh, to become uh, confirmed whether it is appendicitis or not, we'll have to... Why, doctor? Why my, do why, doctor? Why my girl has to have this? Uh, would, you, would, you, uh, would you please sit down for me? Uh, 
because uh, she came with us uh, with uh, her tummy pain on the right side of her uh, abdomen. We did some uh, clinical examination. No, I mean, why my daughter? I mean, why my daughter has to have, uh, suffer from this appendicitis? Why? It, it, it could happen anywhere to any, anyone. It, it's, uh, it's too, it, it can be, it is unavoidable basically. Any, anyone can be affected any anytime. So who is going it's to not that you, it happens with you, but uh, we, we always face, have to face like this patient every day. So it's not that, that it's not that uh, it's only your child because it happens uh, every day and we have to face this case every day. Okay. So who is going to operate in my baby? Uh, our uh, One of the most experienced surgeon, uh, Mr. Ladd, is going to operate upon her. Oh, no, doctor. He had operated on my uh, husband and he couldn't save my, his life. I don't want him to operate my child. I am extremely sorry and please accept my sincere condolences. Uh, uh, so, would I know what happened to your uh, husband? And how yeah, he he's died? suffering from colon cancer and Dr. Led operated on him. He couldn't save him. Can you please tell somebody sorry. else? I'm extremely sorry that uh, see, Miss, uh, these two cases are uh, totally different because uh, I I think whether I surely don't know what happened, but I think uh, as you know, cancer is a very dangerous uh, disease and uh, its progress is very bad. So uh, I think he had uh, died from the complications from the complications of cancer, not from the surgery, because uh, Mr. Ladd is one of the best surgeons we have in our hospital and very expert surgeon. Okay. So is it uh, really necessary to undergo surgery? Okay, Miss, uh, it, it's, uh, uh, it's really necessary because in the uh, in case of growing child, there's a less fat in the tummy and that may uh, perform in any time. So, if we keep it uh, untreated, that might uh, form a very uh, severe form of complications uh, like uh, infections inside the tummy. So I think uh, we should go for that issue. So, you need to start or administer? Sorry? Will this operation lead to administer? Uh, no, Miss. Uh, as uh, as uh, as the patient uh, came to the hospital very early, and we have already been started the uh, treatment like antibiotics and IV fluid. So I think uh, if we go for the surgery very early, we will just uh, may made a, uh, make a uh, horizontal incision like uh, up to uh, that might be a four centimeter maximum. So it won't okay. leave a uh, ugly stuff, but uh, if uh, we found that there's a much more complications inside the tummy, then we might have to uh, extend the uh, incision and that might leave a uh, ugly scar. But that's okay. chance is very less. Okay, so is there any harmful effect in future? Uh, yes, yes, Miss. Uh, there are some complications, like uh, in severe extent of complications, there might be a uh, chance of blockage of as uh, the patient is female, there might be a chance of the blockage of the reproductive tube. But uh, nothing to worry about because every female has two sides of the reproductive tube. And I, I just uh, say, uh, telling you the uh, complications in severe uh, extent of the disease. So uh, as your patient came in at the hospital very early state, so the chance is very less. But uh, the maximum thing that can happen the fallopian tube or uh, reproductive tube can be blockage. So that may form subfertility. So uh, nothing to worry about because there, uh, there is uh, another function on, the, uh, on her left side. Okay, doctor. So when are you going to uh, arrange the operation? Can I see my doctor? Okay. Uh, uh, yes, uh, our uh, senior nurses are taking care of her. So... I will see what can I do for you. Is there any question, Miss? Can I see my daughter? Yes, yes. Uh, I am. Uh, uh, I will see what can I do 
for you and letting you to see her. Is there any question? Please? When are you going to operate on him? Uh, as soon as the Mr. Lat come to the hospital, we'll uh, start the operation and we'll let you know everything and we'll uh, take the uh, consent from you. Okay. How so would Ms. you uh, this summary? Is up. So, Ms. how would Ms. you close the consultation? Uh, ma'am, I will do the summary. Yes. Uh, would we you? Are, uh, we are all. We are all have had to help you and support you and dive your hand. If you yes. have any queries, don't hesitate to contact uh, with me. I will leave my phone number for you. Very the good. Nurse. Yes. Thank you. Yes. This end Thank you, is acceptable. Yes. Okay. Uh, right. Who will give feedback first? You are calling me, Miss. Uh, you can call me. Yeah, I just uh, I I I call <laughs> your name because no. Mr. You call you call you call Mrs. Not Miss. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Right. Can you, you give good. feedback? Yes. It was good. First time you have presented uh, communication skills station. Your um approach was nice right uh, what how could you have improved it more better when a uh, patient's mother said why it happened to my child then uh, how else can you improve your answer ma'am uh, uh, maybe you should tell yes any, yes 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 that can happen to any uh, anyone, anyone yes. anytime but uh, why children are more susceptible or is there any uh, because, uh, the, their uh, tube is narrowed and it's elongated and there's less fat inside the tongue that's all this is not the answer for this one this is when you are telling about the risk that if you don't uh, get that operated then it can rupture and it can yes 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 damn it but I why it, uh, but the cause perfect. Yes, you, you mentioned this one, but I'm asking you to come little early when a uh, patient's mother was saying, why it has happened to my child? Why us? Why my child? So how should you attempt this type of question? What should be the right approach to answer this sort of question? Your uh, background, little first, knowledge? I will ask, yes. I would ask the apologies that uh, that happens to you yes uh, and show concern child, but yes and show concern yes okay uh, yes uh, i can really feel your pain that you're going through it right now and then yes then what should be then you should have little background knowledge about appendix appendicitis little etiology why is it common in which age group is it common uh, if it's common in male or male or females, like because the child is young, so if it's yes. more common in young males or young females, or you should have little uh, background information so that you can say that it's not that uh, you or I can understand what I'm you're going sure. through it, and I'm really sorry for what you're going through it. But can I just tell you, your your child is not the only one who has been through it. It's this much percentage of children who have this yes. appendicitis yes. every now and then so then you can say you then you can go ahead and answer the question so that was one yes, like uh, some answers you can just because this is first time you have started and you've practiced if you will practice more then you'll get the art of answering or attempting these sort of questions it will be it will get more better definitely and uh, how yes, should conclusion be for every scenario you have to make sure with before the bell goes you have to make sure you have to say those those concluding lines which you said now afterwards when bell went so anything you want yes, to add sir. dr hk yeah you told me that uh, don't feel guilty i wasn't still feel guilty about it i was going to tell it later on you told it earlier yeah uh, it's first time he presented, so he'll practice yeah, yeah. and but it will. You insert, you insert all the all the all the, all the queries. Yeah. yeah. Nicely, yes, good. Nice. Thank you. 